Amen. Good morning, New Pilgrim Rest. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Good morning, New Pilgrim Rest. Amen. I want everybody to show how good God has been to them by clapping their hands. I I'm talking about the God of the universe. I'm talking about the God that woke you up this morning. I'm talking about the God that provided for you. I'm talking about the God that protected you last night. I'm talking about the God that's going to um, usher you into heaven. That's the God I'm talking about. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning to you, New Pilgrim Rest, who are here. And good morning to our Facebook Live audience. Amen. It is a wonderful day to praise the Lord on this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask the media ministry, will they come with one selection? I will be right back with a prayer. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's stand up and clap your hands just like this. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap, 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 clap your hands. I dare you to move this way, baby. Just rock and rock. Yep, just rock and rock. I see you. Here we go. This song is simple. It says we're blessed. Yeah, yeah. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. Hey, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Just clap your hands if you know you're blessed. Clap, 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 clap. Yeah. Right here real big. Come on, let's sing it again. We're blessed. Let's go. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Hey. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. Hey. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Everybody say bless. 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 Lift your voice and say bless, 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 bless. Point to yourself this time and say I'm, I'm blessed. blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Come on, real big, let's sing it. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna. I hear you. It's gonna work in your favor. If you believe it. Say late in the midnight. Late in the midnight hour. Yep. God's gonna turn it. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. If you believe it, say it with us. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh, 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 oh. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around and around and around and around and around. Late in the midnight. That's gonna turn it. That's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Yes, late, late in the midnight. God's gonna turn it around and around and around and around and around and around. And around. And around. And around. If you know I say this. God's gonna do it. 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 God's gonna hey. do it. He's working it out. Working it out. God's gonna do it. 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 Yep. He's working it out. Encourage somebody. God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. Oh, God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. Hey, he's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it Whatever out. Whatever it is, he's working it out. He's working he's it out. He's in the mess. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. 
He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Every stronghold he's working. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Yeah, late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Whoa, late in the midnight. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. We're blessed in the city. Come on. Let me hear you say. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Come on. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every struggle, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Come on, if you know you're blessed, give him glory. He's been so good. Hallelujah. He's been so kind. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah to you, name. Hallelujah. Thank you, ministry, ministry, um, music ministry, for that song. Amen. Let us pray. God, how we do praise and worship your name on this Sunday morning, Father, because you are worthy to be praised, Father. Um, you are wonderful. You are great. You are kind. You are compassionate, Father. You are superb, Father. Uh, Father, there is nothing you, that you can't do, Father. You are almighty, all-powerful, oh, Father. And so we come to give your name all the praise and honor and the glory on this morning, Father. Uh, how we do thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins, Father. Um, how we do thank you um, that you rose him up on the third day morning, Father, with all power in his hands, Father. How we do, how we do thank you for forgiveness of sins. How we do thank you for um, access to you, Father. How we do thank you for the adoption process, Father. How we do thank you um, for keeping us, Father, for securing our salvation, Father. Um, Father, there are so many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Father. We could be all day up here naming the blessings that you have given us, Father. So, Father, we have so much to be thankful for. Father, you are so wonderful to us, Father. We... It's just unimaginable, Father, how we would be, where we would be, if you had not intervened in our lives, Father. So, Father, thank you for butting in our lives, Father, when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Thank you for intervening um, in our lives, Father, for snatching us off the road to hell, Father, and placing us on the road to salvation in heaven, Father. Father, first of all, we want to ask um, that you... Uh, I pray for the sick and the shut-in, Father, those who may not be able to attend church service, Father, those who are on their bed of affliction. Father, we pray that you heal them, Father, so you can bring them back to this worship service as the testimony to your goodness and your mercy. We ask for uh, blessings and comfort for the, those who are bereaved. Uh, we ask for uh, blessing and comfort for those who are discouraged, those who may um, be without, Father, the orphan, the widowed people, Father. We just ask for blessings because our world is in turmoil on this morning, Father. We pray for our government on this morning, Father. We pray for the state of our, our nation and the state of our world, Father. Father, there's evil roaming all around this world, Father. Father, but we know you are still in control. So we have something to look forward to, Father. Father, now as we prepare to hear from you on this morning as we prepare to go to higher heights through your word, Father. Uh, Father, we, we need to hear from you, Father. We've walked in this various place with various problems, Father, on our minds. Some of us are discouraged. Some of us are bewildered. Some of us are directionlessness, Father. So, Father, we need to hear from your word today. Preach to our pastor on this morning. Give him the power to... Uh, Give us the words that we need to lead us, Father, in the direction that you want us to go. Father, to heal us, Father, um, to better our lives through your holy word, Father. 
And we'll be careful to give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After another selection from the music ministry, the next voice you will hear will be that of the pastor of the New Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church in the personhood of Dr. B. L. Bell, Sr. Amen. Because we were created to worship him, there is no act that we can't just say, I guess we'll give him the glory today. I guess I'll come into church. I guess I'll put on some clothes and I guess I'll lift my hands. Because the truth of the matter is, he deserves it. The truth of the matter is, if we were upset, our TV wasn't working. We weren't, it wasn't doing it what was created to do, right? So it is our duty as Christians, as believers, as his creation to give him the glory. Why? Because he, come on, say it again. Because he, come on, let's sing this song. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, God, my hallelujah belongs to you. No, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 Deserve it, yeah. You deserve it. Come on, let's sing. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs. I hear you to you. If you know that, come on, let's be one big yeah. choir. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, 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 my hallelujah belongs to you. Ooh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, let's sing it in one voice. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, for waking us up this morning. You deserve it. For starting us on our way. You deserve it. Come on, breath in our body. You deserve it. Come on, all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Come on, he's worthy of all the glory. Sing all of To you, yep. oh, 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 the glory. glory belongs to you. While we have breath in our bodies, we sing all of the glory. All of the glory yep. belongs to you. Come on, sing it like it's your only chance. You deserve it. You deserve Cause you keep being God, hallelujah. You, deserve it. you said by yourself. You deserve it. Cause there's no one that can do you like you. Let's go. It. Come on, let's lift up the highest praise. We sing hallelujah. 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 Say all the glory, all the glory and all the honor, all the honor hey, and all the praise. Because yeah. you deserve it. Because you keep being God, yes. You deserve it. Yes, you, you deserve it. Come on, and you deserve you it. Deserve we're going to lift up that praise. 
Come on and sing with us. Say hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Say, Lord, you're worthy. 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 Say, you are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are time after time. You're faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. I tell you to say, thank you, Jesus. 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 Say hallelujah. 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 It's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say all the glory. All the glory. And all the honor. And all the praise. Come on, say you. With hands lifted, you deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, Come on, and you deserve it. My hallelujah, say. Belongs to you. I don't own it, no. I don't own it, no. My hallelujah belongs to you. Sing to the Father this morning. Sing my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. Belongs to you. Come on, lift up a hallelujah in this place. Lift up a hallelujah in this place. Think about what it could have been and lift up a hallelujah. Think about what it could have been and lift up a hallelujah. Think about what it could have been and say hallelujah. He's a keeper, isn't he? He's a sustainer, isn't he? He's a healer, isn't he? Say hallelujah. 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 He's been real, real good. Yes, he is. He's been real, real good. He's been real, real good. Yes, he has. Time after time. Time after time. He's been real, real good. Yes, he has. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My, 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 my. Ah. Yeah, he's he's been real, real good. He's been real, real good. Yeah. Real, real good. Real, real, real good. To him where the Bible said to him where every knee must bow, every tongue shall confess in the name of Jesus. John said, he who once was dead and is alive forever, evermore. He is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. It's, it's a marvelous day to just be alive. It's a marvelous day. Amen, amen. Let me, let me thank um, our music ministry to B.B. and C.C. Wynum. Thank God for you and to our, amen. And to our musicians, our accomplished musicians, thank you guys so much. Uh, to uh, our presiding officer in the personhood of Pastor Davis and to this waiting congregation. 
And uh, for those of you who have joined us live through Facebook, we thank and praise God for you uh, stopping by this place on this morning to worship with us. I don't want to hold you unnecessarily, unnecessarily too long. There is a there is a powerful word that's been tagging at me. It's uh, Couch Chronicled and Catalog, and the Gospel recorded by St. John. The fourth chapter in the 46th verse. And it reads thusly. So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him. And told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then required he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed and his whole household. He believed in his whole household. Wow, let, let, me, let me just share scattered remarks because the text have already preached itself. Uh, let, let me just use for a subject on this morning, true faith for failing times. True faith for failing times failing times. Charles Schultz, writer and producer of that famous American comic episode called Peanuts, he writes one episode that has become so familiar to so many of us. Charlie Brown is invited by Lucy to come kick the field goal. And even though he's aware that she has pulled this trick on him many times, and he's determined that he's not going to do it again. Somehow he's duped into taking that awful step, trying to kick the football again. In that episode, he takes a running start, and just about time he gets ready to kick the football, Lucy jerks it away. He falls flat on his, on his back. Lucy comes over and looks down upon Charlie Brown and says to him, Charlie Brown, you are an inspiration. Your fate toward human existence is a tremendous blessing to everyone who watches you. And isn't that true that the world offers us so many promises that it's unable to keep. And each year we, we determine that we're not going to be duped into believing what the world offers us. 
And each year, somehow, we wind up falling flat on our back. Because true joy can only be offered by God. But isn't it true, this time of year, that we promise ourselves we're not going to overspend? We're not going to allow the merchants to dupe us into buying things that we already have. And each year, we wind up falling flat on our backs. As the merchants keep showing us these shiny objects with the great big red bow on it. And sometimes they have snow falling in the background to lure us into that Christmas spirit. And every year, we wind up overly in debt because the real merchants really jerk the football from up under us and we fall flat on our backs. I wanted to look at this passage today because John uh, shares with us some truths that can help us uh, as we travel through this thing called faith, this life called faith. J John, John writes, the writer, J John's gospel, unlike the other gospels, John's gospel uh, is primarily a topical gospel. The first verses 1 through 12 uh, deals with the seven signs that Jesus gives in John. Verses 13 through 21 deals with the glory of God. John is always writing uh, with a slant toward the glory of God. In John's gospel, uh, obedience and faith are inseparable. J John will show us that if you have faith, if you have faith, then obedience has to be attached to that faith. You can't, you can't claim, according to you can't claim faith and not have obedience attached to it. When you read John, John, John walks us through uh, his gospel with, 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 with lenses that we can only get what he's saying through the lenses of Jesus Christ. Because you do know in John chapter 1, verse, verse 18, he says, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, who is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him unto you. J John said the only begotten, begotten, monogonase, one gene, one of a kind son. He has declared him to you. Takes that word declared, exegemia in the Greek text, which literally means to pull out that that cannot be seen with the natural eye. He says God has sent his son so he could exegete himself. You do know that Jesus is God in the flesh. And he walks around pulling God out, showing him to mankind. I know that's true because in John chapter 8, he, pulled, he takes a woman who's caught in adultery. Uh, and they wanted to really uh, stone her. But Jesus reaches down and pulls God out and says, he without sin cast the first stone. Well, J John in chapter 2 said he, he turned water into, into wine. J John chapter 3 said Nicodemus came to him by night and asked him, Master, what, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus tells him, Nicodemus, you can't even see into the kingdom of God unless you be born again. And Nicodemus comes to him burdened, bewildered, and blind. And Jesus tells him, you must be born again. John chapter 4 opens up with him going. He said, there's a need. I must go through Samaria. 
And there he meets the woman at the well. And he asked her to go get her husband. And she said, I have none. He said, you're right. You've had five. And the one you with now, he don't belong to you. But the gist of it, when she meets the seventh man, he turns her life around. And she runs the town and brings the whole town back saying, come see a man that have told me every, everything in which I've done. John doesn't stop there. John chapter 5, he opens up with a man who's uh, been, at the, been at the pool for 38 long years. And his complaint is no man will help him get into the pool. And Jesus shows up to counsel the 39th year and tells him to pick up his bed and, and walk. John chapter 6 opens up with him saying he fed 5,000 men besides women and children in John chapter 6. John chapter 7, the, the Pharisees uh, have heard how he has been blessing people and they send, they send officers to arrest him. John chapter 8, he says that a woman is caught in adultery and they wanted to stone her. And he reaches down to John, so he writes on the ground. And he says, he without sin cast the first stone. John chapter 9, there's a blind man who's blind from his birth. And Jesus comes and gives him his sight. And he goes into the temple to shout about what Jesus had done for him. And then there are some accusers there saying, you are the one that was blind. T -t 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 Tell me, how did you receive your sight? He said, well, I can't really tell you that. I, all I know is I was blind, but now I... See, well, J John chapter ten. John chapter ten. He he says that I I am I am the true shepherd. J John chapter eleven. You remember he opens up. He goes to a town called Bethany, and there his friend Lazarus had died. Two sisters named Mary and Martha. M Martha runs and tells him, "If you had been here, our brother would not have died." And Jesus said, if you can just believe, you'll see him again. Jesus tells Martha, show me where you, where you laid it. Well, you know the story. He calls Lazarus and Lazarus comes out of the grave. Uh, throw, and he says, take off the grave clothes of Lazarus. And then John chapter 12 opens up. He's at the home of Mary and Martha in Bethany and they're having a feast there. And John says, and while at the table, he says, Martha is serving, but Mary is sitting by Jesus listening. And as she's sitting by Jesus listening, and she's listening at Jesus, and she's looking at her brother. And the more she heard the words of Jesus, and the more she looked at her brother, she looked at her brother and looked at Jesus, she looked at Jesus, looked at her brother. The Bible says she broke over an expensive box, a, a spike now, and pours it on Jesus. And anoints his feet because she remembered what he had done for her. Well, John chapter, John chapter, John chapter 13 says, listen, uh, he puts a towel around him and washes the disciples' feet. J John chapter 15 says he's walking through through the through the garden and, and, and he looks up and says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch that abided in me, every branch that bear fruit, he, every branch that bear not fruit, he taketh away. Taketh away. Iro in the Greek text, but we'll get our word, English word arrow plane. It means he lifts it up off the ground. John, John, chapter, John chapter 16 says he prays for his disciples as he's getting ready to leave. And he looks up to the Father and he prays for them. But then John chapter 17 says he prays for himself. John chapter 18, John chapter 18 is where, where Peter has denied him. He's arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. John chapter 19 says that he's crucified on Calvary. John chapter 20, verse 11 says he shows up and the disciples are barred behind closed doors. And he says, he says to them, peace be unto you. 
But Thomas was not there. You remember Thomas said, when they told him when Thomas finally arrived, he said, I won't believe until I see him, until I can put my finger in the holes in his hands. I will not believe. Jesus shows up a few days later when Thomas is back from his sabbatical and he says, Thomas, put your finger in my hand. Put him in my side. Tells Thomas, blessed is he that believe it and yet not see it. John chapter 21, he's on the shore cooking fish. He's on the shore cooking what the disciples are out in the water looking for. John takes us through all of those chapters just to show us that faith and obedience go together. Comes, comes here in John chapter 4 and here comes a nobleman. The Bible says, watch, watch this. The Bible says, uh, here, here comes this, this, this nobleman and he comes to Jesus because he has a problem. Watch the text. The text opens up by saying, so Jesus came again. Listen, you don't want to pass that word <laughs> again. You see, all of us can shout if we don't get anything else about Jesus again this because we have failed many times but he picks us up again we've made promises that we couldn't keep but he gives us another chance again this, this, this word again, you, you'll find it in Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 4 because Jeremiah was sent to the potter's house and the potter has the clay on the wheel and, and the clay is marred but the potter makes it over again. J Jonah received word to go to Nineveh and he changed his mind and got him a ticket and went to Tasha. John, uh, Jonah chapter 3 says, and the Lord said to Jonah, again. Isn't it marvelous that he don't quit talking to us when we mess up? <sighs> First King Elijah is sitting on the Jupiter tree. And the Bible says an angel appeared to him and fed him so he could get strength. Not just one time, but the Bible said an angel came again. All of us can shout because we are living in and again. You, you, you didn't think you were going to come through what you, what you were in, but again he showed up and brought us out again. Four years ago we thought we were Doom because of number 45, but God came through again. And so we don't want to look. John has this again in here for he says, and Jesus comes to Canaan again. Because you know he had he had turned water into wine the first time he came. And so, so John says again, but notice this, this nobleman, no, notice this nobleman here uh, who comes to him, uh, this, this nobleman, the, the, the Greek word for nobleman is, is basilikos, and it means a royal official. It, it carries the idea that this man was somehow uh, hired or one, or one of the uh, royal officiants to the king. But yet in his royalness, he still had trouble. He had a child at home that was sick. And let me just say, it does not matter what your status is. It, it does not matter what your title is. It does not matter how well you're known. Trouble will show up. I'm saying it again. Trouble will 
show up. This, 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 this man comes to Jesus, first of all, out of desperation. It's a fate of desperation. His child is sick. More than likely, he's tried to sum of everything and could not get him cured. But the text said he heard a cool, which means noised, rumored that he was back in town again. Jot this down. Whenever you're in trouble and you know that Jesus is nearby, go to him. Watch the text. The, John says he was a royal official, which suggests his son, Calvin, had royal blood running in him. But still the fact remains he was sick. And the text says this father did not sit around the house singing, woe is me. He did the best next, he did the best thing he could. Now watch this now. He didn't bring the son to Jesus. Perhaps because the son was too ill to travel. But the father said, y'all watch after my boy. I'm going to find this Jesus. I, I, I've got a rumor. I've heard about him. Now, now, now check this out, y'all. John does not record any miracle of him healing anybody. Up to this point. And John. The only thing Jesus has done. He's turned water into wine. But this nobleman said. If he can turn water into wine. He can do something with the sickness. Of my son. Th th this is the kind of desperate faith. See so some of us have seasonal faith. As long as the season is doing good, I trust God. I, yeah, he, yeah, He's our. But when when the season change, our faith seems to change. We we we've got we we got not only seasonal faith, we 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 we, we have selective faith. We, we, we select when we want to have faith. And we select who we want to have faith in. And, and then there's circumstantial faith. Depends on the circumstance whether or not I'm going to exercise my faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Faith, not by sight. Hebrew writer in, in Hebrews 11, one says, faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not yet seen. That, that, that word substance is the hoopostatus. The, the, the hoopostatus, when you look, in, look at it in the, in, in the Hebrew, uh, it, it's, it, because every Greek word has a Hebrew equivalent. And this word hoopostatus was used when they would make wine and the sediments from the wine would settle at the bottom of the bottle. And in other words, it had a support system. And, and he, he says this, he said, substance is the hoopostatus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not yet seen. Now, now watch this because substance and evidence, it, it, it forms a hendiasis. A hendiasis is, is when the writer uses two words for the same meaning. Substance is evidence and evidence is substance. You can't get a conviction and you can't get a conviction if you don't have no evidence. You can't walk in the court with no talking about I got evidence and it has no substance to it. Yeah. Now I know there's something else. Can I, can I just take my time? McCoy, I notice this royal servant was in the palace 
But he did not lose his status because of the deficiency of faith. Now, he, 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 he did not have the faith. Now, watch the text. The text says when he gets to where, now listen, he starts off with a desperate faith. And then when he gets to Jesus, he tells him to come heal his child. But then watch this, he adds, watch this now, he adds, he's at the point of death. As if Jesus doesn't have any power beyond death. That's, 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 that's faith deficiency. Putting limits on God. Restrictions on God. He, he comes in his desperate faith. Because he can't turn anywhere else. And, and when he gets to Jesus, he finds out, he discovers he has a deficiency in faith. Because he says, my son is at the point of death. Unlike the centurion in, in Matthew chapter 8, uh, verse 8, who says to him, you don't even have to come to my house. You can just say in a word. And my servant will be healed. Have I got a witness here? That's the kind of faith that he wants us to have that we ought to walk through and walk by. F faith faith that, 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 that cannot be intimidated by the circumstances of time. Watch this now. He, he, he comes and watch what Jesus says to him. And Jesus seems to just diss the man. Watch what Jesus says. Jesus said unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Now check this out, y'all. The you in this text, in the Greek grammatical form, is plural. So not only is he talking to the man, he's talking to everybody out there. He said, except you. Watch this now. He seemed to suggest that, listen, I, I know that you've heard of me. He said, but listen, I want you to believe in my person rather than what my signs. And there are many people who don't believe in his person, but believe in the signs. And he says to this man, if you can just somehow forget the signs, Believe in my person. Believe who I, I am. He says, you, you can just be blessed if you just believe who I, I am. But there is a deficiency in our faith. We, we, we claim we got faith, but when soon as circumstances arise that we don't know how to deal with, we start backing up. Start making excuses as to why we can't do what we've been asked to do. That, 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 that's circumstantial kind of faith. But, 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 but G Jesus is want to get, he wants to get us to where we have unquestionable faith. That's where he wants to get. He wants to get you and I to a place where we, our faith in him is unquestionable. And, 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 what's, and, and so when, when, he, when he says this, watch this now. When he says this, watch the next text. The nobleman said unto him, watch this now. Sir, come down. My child die. Un unlike the woman uh, in Matthew 15, the Canaanite woman, when Jesus told her it's not meat that we should give bread to the dogs, she said, uh, she said even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. But this fellow doesn't seem to have a comeback when Jesus tells him that except ye believe in signs and wonders. Well, we're taking a look at faith desperation, faith deficiency. Can we just take a look at faith deliverance? Jesus says in verse 50, <laughs> go thy way. Thy son liveth. 
Go thy way. Thy son liveth. He told him, why are you standing here watching me? And trying to, trying to see which direction I'm going to go. He says, your son liveth. He takes three words. He takes three words to give this young man confidence and to boost his faith. He takes three words, and in those three words are ten letters. In these three words, go thy way. Go thy way. Thy son liveth. You want to underline thy son liveth. Thy son liveth. Thy son liveth. Because we got a lot of things dying in our lives. And we have a resurrected Christ who can resurrect some things in our lives. He said, our son liveth. He was a father. He was a ruler. He could have been a husband. But he says to him, go thy way, thy son Live it. So the question before the house, before I close, how, how, how deep is your faith? How deep is your, your faith? It's not a faith that should just be talked about. Faith without works that's what James said. Faith without works is dead. Show me thy works and I'll show you a man that got faith. Faith without works. We, 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 we all run around. We, I be, I, see, faith is a matter of you trusting God. Not, 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 not society, not the world. Not what the world has to offer. Your, our faith, the Christian believer, our faith is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. So as I close, quit, quit taking the world promises. And, and, and tune in to Solomon. T tune in to the words of Solomon. Solomon 3, <laughs> verse 5. He says, he, he talks about trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy, thy path. Lean not to thy own understanding. See, a lot of things we don't understand, but he said, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Don't lean on that. I, I, I know we don't understand, we, we don't understand uh, as much as we should about the vaccine. But he said, don't, 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 don't get caught up on whether it's going to be good for you. Don't, don't be caught up on the side effects. Trust in me. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge me. He says, and I will direct your, your path. Tell the, the man to go that way. Go, go on back home. Your son liveth. J Jesus says to the man, ah, uh, go home. But the text said the man believed. The word that Jesus has spoken unto him. And John says he went his way. Have I got a witness here? He could have stayed around talk, talking about the, what, what am I going back to? How do I know what you're saying is true? But he believed 
on the word of Jesus. And the Bible says he went uh, that very, that very hour. And John says as he was going down his way, J John says his servants came to meet him because his servants had good news for this royal official. He, he told him, ah, your son liveth. Have I got a witness here? And, and uh, they, the, 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 the royal servant uh, asked him, uh, when, when, when did the, the fever leave him? And they, they said uh, about the, the seventh hour. And he knew that uh, that was the same time uh, that he believed uh, the words uh, of Jesus. Because uh, faith uh, is not something uh, that uh, when Jesus releases uh, his healing, uh, if you believe, uh, it's instantaneous. Have I got a witness here? And Jesus gave uh, him uh, uh, some words uh, that he could uh, grow by. Have I got a witness here? Faith uh, helps us to grow every time we exercise uh, our faith. Uh, we grow a little bit more. Have I got a witness here? <laughs> well, uh, the Bible says faith comes by hearing uh, and hearing by the word of God. Have I got a witness? Because uh, in other words, the more you hear the word of God uh, and the more you apply the word of God uh, to your life, uh, the more you can grow by. Uh, have I got a witness here? And so the more uh, we hear the word uh, and the more we apply the word, uh, the more we will grow in the word. Uh, have I got a witness here? And when we grow in the word of God, uh, then the, the devil uh, will cannot uh, uh, fool uh, and trick us. Uh, have I got a witness here? Because uh, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Uh, and you got to know uh, the he that's in you. Uh, you got to know the one uh, who's working on the inside. Uh, you got to know the one uh, who's lifting you up. Uh, you got to know the one uh, who's raising you up. Uh, you got to know the one who's keeping you every day of your life. Uh, you got to know the one who keeps on making ways out of no ways. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, let me close uh, this little text. But the, the Bible says, uh, in the, when the, did the son uh, amend? Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, he said the fever left him. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, whenever the Lord uh, decides uh, he's going to heal you, uh, he does it uh, instantaneously. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, because the Bible says in Mark 131, uh, when the fever left Peter's mother-in-law, uh, she got up uh, and started ministering to them. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, and so he has the power uh, to turn things around in our lives. Uh, he has the power uh, to make us uh, strong again. Uh, he has the power uh, to turn dark days uh, into bright tomorrows. Uh, he has the power uh, to take uh, that that we didn't think we could make it with. Uh, give us a little bit. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, and so we can run on uh, to see what the end's going to be. Uh, thank God for his word. Uh, true faith uh, will help you in failing times. Uh, don't worry how bad things are looking. Uh, don't worry how bad things are going. Uh, just have faith in God. Uh, put your faith. Uh, I said put your faith uh, in the hand of the man that can steal the waters. Uh, put your faith uh, in the hands of uh, of the man uh, that can calm the sea. Uh, put your faith uh, in the hands uh, of the man uh, who scooped up the residue of dust uh, and created man uh, and man became a living soul. Uh, put your faith uh, in the hands of the man uh, who took the stars uh, and threw them in their silver socket uh, and somebody wrote a song uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star uh, How I Wonder What You Are Put Your Faith uh, in the hands of a man uh, who can steal the waters. Uh, 
put your faith in the hands of the man who punched holes in darkness and light came forth. Put your hands in the hand of the man who's able to turn things around. Put your faith in the hand of the man that don't know the word failure. Put your hand in the hand of the man who runs the whole universe. Put your faith in the hands of the man who controls the universe. Put your hand, put your faith in the hand of the man who's able, I say able, able, I say he's able, he's able to make things better. He's able to heal your body. He's able to turn away with child around. He's able, I say he's able, able, I say he's able. Put your faith in the hand of the man who died on Calvary. Put your faith in the hand of the same man who gave his hands on Calvary. They nailed his hands on Calvary. Put your faith in those same hands. Those hands, I said those hands, have touched so many lives. Those hands, and though they nailed to the cross, put spikes in his feet. But that's not the end of the story. Got him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. And early, I say early, early, Sunday morning, early, Sunday morning, got out of the grave with all power, all power in his hand. All power is in his hands. Nail prints in his hands, but there's power in his hands. Healing in his hands. Forgiveness in his hands. On his hands, in his hands. In his hands, in his hands. Wholeness in his hands. Joy in his hand, joy in his hands, healing in his hands, way making in his hands. Don't give up on his hand. Put your faith in his hands. Put your faith in his hands. Put your faith in his hands. He will. I say he will. Won't he do it? I say won't he do it? Is there anyone who's in the crowd? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Is there anybody here that know anything about him turning it around for you? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Is there anybody in here tried my Jesus? Anybody in here has your back up against the wall? Friends turn their back on you. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he lift you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he give you joy? Won't he give you joy? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? You ought to wave your hand if you know he's done it for you. Tell somebody, I'm a witness. 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 Now let me tell you about a witness. A witness can only tell what they've seen and heard. A witness can only tell what he or she have seen and heard. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunders roar. I felt sin breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul. But I heard I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard the boss of Jesus telling me to be still, be still, be still, be still, be still. In your operation, be still. In your journey, be still, be still, and know I'm God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. Woo. I trust in God. I trust in.
I trust. It's not the scientists I trust. I trust in God. Wherever I may be. On the land or out on the raging sea. Come with me from day to day. My heavenly father. He watches He watches over oh, little old me. And listen, the Bible says not even a sparrow falls to the ground without our Father knowing about it. And if he would watch over a little bit of sparrow, I know he'll watch over me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes. Is on the little bitty sparrow. <laughs> and I know, unequivocally, I know unquestionably, I know that he watches over little old me. That's why I sing. I sing because I'm free. I know what it's like to be bound. But there's no more chains holding me. No more chains holding me. I'm free. I'm free. Though the church is open. Maybe one candidate for baptism. Christian experience, door to church is open. If you're here today, if you're on site, whether you're looking in on this broadcast, we offer you the invitation to come to Jesus Christ, who is a healer, he's a redeemer, He's a rescuer. He can rescue you. He can renovate your life. He can restore you. He can do it. If you've been broken. He can restore you. But you got to come to him. And listen, if you, if, here, here's the ASIC test. If you think God is pleased with you, check out your faith. Hebrews 11 6 says it's impossible to please God without faith. He that come to him must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so while you might be pleased with God, the biggest question is, is God pleased with you? And if you're not exercising your faith, walking by faith, living by faith, then you are displeasing God. If you're here today, won't you come? As she sings, come on.
I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. My hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Whoa, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. 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 
me thee. Lord, we love you more than anything. Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah. Lord, we love you more than anything. Lord, we love you more than anything. My, my, my. Thank you, CC. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you. Um, we have a Christian in here today. We have little Araya here with us, nine months old. You want to grab this mic, don't you? You want to grab the mic? All right, we have Araya here. Come on, give us a scripture. Come on, someone give us the scripture from uh, Mark uh, where Jesus. Oh, you can't have this mic. You can't, no, you can't have this mic. Listen, we want to thank God. Praising God for all of the families that were blessed at our latest mobile pantry food drive. With the help of so many wonderful volunteers, we were able to feed over 290 families. We will be feeding our senior citizens Saturday, November the 20th, at 11.30 a.m. Thank you for viewing Pilgrim Land News. And if you would like to be a part of this worship service, please watch this quick video about Givelify. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done.